brief message from your friendly neighborhood editing Jordan. We tend to try to keep things pretty PG-13 around here, but this is an improv podcast. So who knows what we're going to say. Sometimes we throw in some swearing, some sexual content, and some violence. So as a general warning, viewer discretion is advised. Also to be noted, the opinions stated about a certain tabletop role-playing game are just that, our opinions. We love the game and we like talking about it. So any criticisms are really just all in good fun. That being said, wizards, please hire us. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Wouldn't you like to know what that means? What, recording in progress? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? I, I don't know what that was, but... Uh... <clears throat> She peggle on my peglin till I... I peggle know, like the game. unicorn game? No, the the plinko. There we go. Peggy That's Hill? She peggle on my peglin till I plinko. <laughs> Poggle. <laughs> I'm sick. Not Again? physically. No. You were sick physically. A few weeks ago. Not even. As was I. As was I. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the Nat One Podcast, aka Nope, because nope, you're not gonna wanna hear what we're about to have to say. I'm Pertusa. I'm Levi. And I'm Jordan. I'm sick in a different kind of way. In a well, we know that. More mysterious kind of way. I think all of us are in kind of well, some I of think us that's in why less we're friends, in like. less mysterious kinds of ways, but some of us in more mysterious kinds of ways. Mine's not mysterious. I've been diagnosed. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, that, I was gonna say we all had a mysterious kind of way, but then I thought about it and I was like, no, some of us nope, it's not I've been that tested. mysterious at all. <laughs> we know exactly what letters are responsible mm -hmm. for this brain. <laughs> and like, like Taryn. He hasn't been tested, but like I don't think it's mysterious. <laughs> it's not mysterious. Him. It's genetic, and we're pretty sure. <laughs> and so yeah, we can. We're we all are under like the assumption with Tara. Yeah. It is a shock after uh, attending the con that we had gone to a few weeks ago, where twice at two different panels we gave, I was accused of whoever came up with these panels having been under the influence of something and having to explain to them that no not at all it's just the mysterious now you've got me saying mysterious <laughs> it's just the enigmatic, you said enigmatic depths you inner workings of, of our horrible horrible minds <laughs> that's why we have a podcast yeah i'm quite proud of my ability to confuse and frighten as well as entertain you should be it's a very strong ability to confuse and frighten <laughs> thank you as well as entertain mm -hmm. hard to cultivate Easy to master. Isn't it yeah. usually the reverse? <laughs> usually, but not always. The Wabajack! He's, he's Sheogorath? No. Let's talk about diseases in D&D. Okay. <clears throat> I, I, I had planned on it. That was really funny. I feel like I'm going to be... I feel like I'm going to feel like I'm going... I'm losing my mind this entire episode. <laughs> because I just saw, like, for a moment there, Jordan open her mouth and, and like, no, there was, like, a blip. It seemed like the microphone only picked up, like, a, a half a second of what was spoken. It may have peaked because I coughed. That's that's what it was. Okay, because it was it was terrifying. <laughs> You're it welcome. Was, like, me and Levi were just conversing and I just saw, and I was like, I was just like, great, here we go. <laughs> here we go again. I can intentionally off. gaslight you and make you feel like you're losing your mind if that's what you would prefer, though. I always <laughs> do. I always feel like I'm losing my mind. Uh, I refer Just to embraced the it at this point. Of 2018. That was terrifying. <laughs> I, I don't remember what the great rat incident is. Crazy? I was crazy once. Oh, like that? Around. No. I'm yes, just no, saying, man. There was a real great rat it's thing. A, that it's a great rat incident. In 2018. I'm not going to talk about it because that's not what we're talking about today, but it did happen. It was. I would real, like elaboration. I, I think it kind of goes hand in hand with illness because it's an illness disease. of the mental variety. Oh, okay. I... No, we're talking about different diseases today. Um, After we finish recording, you have to expand upon the rat incident in I 2018. Shall, but I believe you will recall Please. That as I start talking about it, but not now. 
yeah, D&D diseases. We had recorded this episode once before, but due to a complication, uh, it's gone. So we're going yep. to revisit I'm sorry. this. It's not your fault. <laughs> uh, um, this may, may feel samey for us, but I'm going to try my darndest to review what must be reviewed and then mix it completely up. Wonderful. So, thoughts on diseases. Not prevalent enough in D&D. Yay or nay? Definitely not, no. Not prevalent enough, but I feel like there's a caveat of it depends on what kind of D&D you are playing. True. Um, I mean, if you're going off of, like, my preference, which is I like fantasy, but I'm also basing part of it off of real-world reality, there probably should be a lot more than there is, because disease is a very real thing that happens fairly commonly throughout the world, throughout all of history, so... Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Why'd you say it so aggressively? <laughs> I don't like sickness. Sickness is theft. No, that's taxes, mm. buddy. Well, it can be theft. Theft of my energy. I was going to say of life. I'm or like the panic. week that I had COVID and I didn't get paid because I couldn't go to work because I had I That was bad. That's like roundabout theft, kind of. Although yeah. the disease isn't, well, I mean, I guess it's getting your time. But yeah. Don't say that YouTube doesn't like that word. I'll bleep it. Time? Okay. No, <laughs> the, the, the great sickness. Of we all. have a oh. we, we have a fun new bleep sound that I'm implementing this year. Oh, cool. I'm excited. It, we used it in the first episode because I, I said the... I, I, oh, I, I didn't watch that far into it. God damn it, Levi. I yeah. was here for it. I <laughs> did it. Who made the first transgression by not watching the Fushuan video, which I bet you still haven't watched. True. I uh, bet you still haven't watched the Fushuan video. Nope, and I've also not watched Amazing Digital Circus, so suck it. Uh, <laughs> and second off, I made a video that came out very recently, and I haven't even watched it. <laughs> It was pretty Valid. funny. I enjoyed it. Guess what, buddy? Mm -hmm. I'm making another video tomorrow, and I'm not going to watch it either. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to pay. That's, <laughs> that's the general consensus. Once you edit it, it's done. I don't have to look at it anymore. Like, it's <laughs> it's uh, on the internet now. That's a good idea for a sickness brain rot, but we'll get to that. Uh, huh. Unless you're going back and re-categorize. Uh, Catalog cataloging, that's the word I'm going through. The only time I rewatch our content is when I'm recataloging lore from the roleplay radio episodes. Oh, oh yeah. So yeah. I look for highlights in our gaming stuff sometimes. But anyway. Um Taryn. Yeah. Taryn. I Taryn? No, quit sickness. Sick sickness. brain rot. Brain rot. <laughs> um ADHD. <laughs> brain rot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I want more sickness in D and D. As, as we had mentioned last time when we recorded it, uh, half of the party that I'm currently DMing for are completely immune to diseases, so I can't nope. fully implement them because I dream of having uh, a couple of sessions back-to-back -back perhaps where somebody gets sick, but then that infects the whole dang group because I think that would be hilarious. That'd be funny to have a yep. sick day game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is also kind of just partly a consequence of um, what your party composition is because some people just disease no doesn't work on them or also if other people get diseases those same people can just be like nope you're fine yep mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly yep. it's very easy to make a workaround for diseases typically again depends on your play style but that's the more fun to have them you can throw them at people all the time because it's pretty easy to fix i do think because i know a problem i've always had with implementing diseases is that where i'm just like well like, they're not going to actually be consequential in any regard because they'll just be fixed after, like, a day. Because someone will just cast Remove Disease or, like, they'll go find a level 2 cleric who can cast that or something. Um, Unless you're Layla Ronis' mom who had cancer. So something I've I've thought about and would have probably got to expand upon had we done that storyline probably yeah. is i've considered the idea of it being just like real life where like the lower level the magic is it's just like tears of medicine it's like if you're casting like a first level spell to get rid of a disease that's like ibuprofen like it might help it might get rid of it yeah but it's not gonna be like 
here's uh, steroids to get rid of it. Uh, that's like a level three or four is steroids. And then you got to get up to like level level eight is like you're doing like a skin graft. Um, so that, that I've, I've dabbled, I've, I've considered the idea of dabbling with like, yeah, you have a disease and it's a bad evil, not evil. It's a bad, gross disease that's really infectious. So the magic to get rid of it has to be of a certain level or higher. Or you can't get rid of it. I'm getting over the fact that you be profen, bro. <laughs> I do. He do be profen. I do be profen. That's what <laughs> I've been done profen. This is a double thing for me because one, it's just a funny, silly thing, but also it's ibuprofen, not ibuprofen. Is it pronounced ibuprofen? That's yeah. Spelled I have pronounced. never heard anyone pronounce it that well, way. Think about where we live, and re- and you'll remember why it's not pronounced correctly. Okay. True. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> go wash your hands before you go eat dinner. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so I'm very keen on that because there was the whole debacle with the UB Funky community back in the day. Um. <clears throat> I think there's a handful now. It doesn't of sound like a word. <clears throat> Continue, sorry. <laughs> no, there's a handful of ways to deal with the things. See, that's an interesting approach, but I don't like it so much because that kind of gates your players for their decisions. If they're like, True. I specifically chose this spell so I could pe- uh, you know, cure people's sicknesses, it's like, well, buddy, you're level five, so screw you. Die in a <laughs> hole. Your mom has cancer. Yes. Um, I prefer instead, one, all illnesses can be cured by the spells as they are listed and the paladin effects, which makes it super easy to cure. However incorporate sudden onset drastic illnesses i don't know what you want to do exactly or how they're caused but i think that's much funnier and that way if they have drastic you know ailments then you need that remove you know sickness the you know cure disease now you don't need it you know oh i have to change my spell list i'll do it for you tomorrow that won't work I have internal hemorrhaging, the disease. (laughs) I need it fixed now. (laughs) Um, Or secondarily, if you want to circumvent it, you can make diseases that aren't actually diseases and are curses or something like that, which then just Mm -hmm. brings it back to remove curse. Yeah. But But it doesn't work. You need to remove curses. No, I don't like that technique. Um uh, there's there's a there's a few different ways you have to do it. That's my favorite way though, is just make the sickness sicknesses that don't have very strong effects don't hardly exist they're basically the population is vaccinated towards them because of the sheer amount of cure disease stuff that exists oh that was the other thing control the amount of that that exists so Mm -hmm. like there there's very few people that can cure diseases that have the spell or the ability to even do it therefore sickness still prevails also also you could do if several small time sicknesses aren't that big because people keep fixing them, you can make it to where maybe, I don't know, there's a dispute between the church and a society. And so the church is like, fine, we just won't cure you. And they're like, huh, so what? We don't care. No one gets sick. And then like a tiny common cold infects everybody, but because they haven't had the sickness in forever, everyone gets messed up from Mm -hmm. it. And so it's like, see, now you need us. And you can do that for the party too, where they're just like, well, we don't get sick. And then... (laughs) <laughs> Somebody got smallpox. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> smallpox is not a tiny. Well, exactly, because they like they brought back smallpox because they're no longer vaccinated. Oh, oh I got the black lung. Can you cure me? It kind of hurts a little bit. No, you punched me in the gut and stole my money last night. <laughs> Please, I think I'm gonna die in 14 hours. <laughs> you burned down my house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's just the so plot yeah. to Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh. Plan. Actually, that is the plot to Red Dead Redemption 2. I watched Arthur, the... bad person in gang, gets tuberculosis, realizes maybe he shouldn't be that bad of a person before he dies. See? You could do that to your party. <laughs> morally great character becomes morally good because otherwise they were going to die. <laughs> Might still die anyway. Uh, That's one way to do an alignment check. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think the best way to incorporate illnesses without them just failing because of the easy, low-level access there is to fix them is one, control the scarcity of cures, or two, uh, make the severity of illnesses much more drastic. 
because then it's just not a joke. I really like the idea of sudden onset hemorrhaging. <laughs> oh, what a sentence. You're, you're fine one moment and then the next you're just coughing up blood. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what would cause it. I have to figure that part out, but it'd be so great to Probably just be like... like a lot of blunt force trauma. Well, see, that makes sense. I want something that doesn't. Cellular self-destruction. Well, I'm thinking from a from a place of if you've had like if you've been in several combats back to back and you haven't taken the time to rest properly or like you've just been using like, all right, we're we're gonna fix it later. Here's just a healing word to keep you up, and you've done that so many times, then eventually your organs just go, uh, nope. And That's good just too. I like that. However, that one makes sense. I would advise Levi do something like that. I you just want like, spontaneous bleeding. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I th I like the idea, especially in a, a world where science isn't not necessarily bad, but it's not as nearly as developed. Like the characters in the world do not know the answers that the DM and maybe the players do. So I like the idea of just this random like species of flowers that upon being sniffed causes internal <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> drastic severe internal bleeding amazing and just no amazing one, no, one, <laughs> no one no one's figured it out maybe there's like a delay period so like no one's really figured out that that's the common you're just describing radiation right now you're just it's, and it's so cool i love radiation <laughs> in fact i had a dream that d in d and d ran like i had a parenthesis thing that was called like rad damage and I always thought it was radiant damage, but then when we played, it was actually radiation damage, which made paladins a lot more interesting. That's I'll tell terrifying. you that. Terrifying. <laughs> the nuclear oh. age. Basically, yeah. being near a paladin in combat is like standing next to the demon core when the pencil That's fell out from how under the oh, aura was. works yeah. like that. <laughs> oh, the reason you can't be frightened is because you have a nuclear weapon near you. <laughs> Does anybody taste iron? <laughs> Oh, that's what it is right that's what it is yes because it's remember. your blood well that's yeah i couldn't remember if it was iron or something else see now we're cooking well let's uh take a trip down to the nearest nuclear plant and we can find out mm -hmm. we can remember if it's iron or not <laughs> um so that, that's the idea of like uh diseases in the game although you know like, if you had a flower like that TJ would immediately pick it and figure out how to put it on the end of an arrow and like deal severe amounts of damage to not without <laughs> inhaling it first. True. You get to be sick before you get to use it. <laughs> and then think about the way, like, remember Hector and his funny armor that killed him almost in the film yeah. that he would have just died if not for yeah. uh succeeding his death saving throws. Uh, uh do oh. that with, with Kazuma, right? Like Oh no. I'm gonna go scavenge, finds flowers, does that, dies. <laughs> Hours later, but this time him? can't succeed on death saving throws because has internal hemorrhaging. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be even worse if it was Kazuma because somebody would be like, Hey, where's Kazuma? And everybody would be like, Oh, he's probably around. He's yeah. around. He does this all the time. He'll this show back up eventually. Yeah, this well, is just I'm normal behavior. It. Oh, Random no. Disasters like this would be amazing. <laughs> he set the precedent for that being how he acts. He shouldn't make expect us to be weirded out by his absence. I'm telling you, make it even better. Not have these flowers grow in patches. They specifically only grow in independent spots by themselves. Oh, that's so suspicious. Do not touch flowers that don't grow near anything else like them. <laughs> that makes it so much better. That's People why are... you would end up touching it. Yeah. No, that's, that's why you run the other direction. Would TJ would end up touching it. I TJ know. would end up touching it, Jordan. I know. <laughs> Darren. He uh, would be curious. He would be like, why is it there by itself? My superstitious Appalachia brain goes, no, that's not something that's real. Walk away from it now. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. So that's some ideas on how to make diseases effective. Now let's talk about some diseases, huh? Hawaiian uh, cat flu. Not this again. Okay, well, you heard her. Leave I go. Wow. You that? Ba barely. Okay. <laughs> Can you do it again? <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> I didn't think so. Um, oh, are we doing the, we're doing the make a disease right now? Because I have some that I will share, but I spent a long time talking just now specifically about the funny flower. So now it's your turn to talk and talk about something. 
Uh, hmm. An well, actual an actual disease suggestion would be talking about Hanahaki disease again, not Hawaiian cat flu. <laughs> oh, that was that was cool, but also goofy. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. I like it. It's what it's a really what, the cool thing about trope. the flower, the love flowers yeah. in, the, in the lungs. And we talked about yeah, that was something we talked about the first time we recorded this, which is there's a whole idea of basically kind of like love sickness where you get flowers in your lungs. That's flowers. In, in your lungs, lungs. Uh, and then it kills you because you suffocate so only if only if the love is unrequited if you, only if you the get them to fall for you then they go away so i came up with this idea of how we could implement it into D, which is you make it into a curse and some guy some evil wizard or just asshole wizard um casts it on someone and then you have to go find this random person that they made the target of your love and get them to love you or you die <laughs> because the love if it's unrequited and you have like a time limit it'd be it could be similar to like geish in that effect where it's like it's a week or a month or something and you have to go find this person and make them fall in love with you dummy um I could also see something like that being used in like a fableish sort of way. I'm thinking mm -hmm. like Beauty and the Beast, where there's like a story of like some guy who was super arrogant or something, and like was rude to to, to a to some peasant girl, like some noble guy, and so the local witch casts this on him and is like, "You must make her fall in love with you, or you will die." And then you get you can get a fairy tale story out of that because now he's like, I hate her and think she's disgusting. But if I don't actually genuinely have her fall in love with me, I die and I'm arrogant and want to live. And then, of course, to actually have her fall in love with you, you have to actually fall in love with her. Not 100 percent of the time, but it's likely it's probable that it will happen that way. And then we talked about part of the the trope in actual fiction. Um if if you cannot accomplish this goal or do not want to have this goal accomplished you can have the flowers like surgically or magically removed but then you lose the ability to love period yeah, yeah. so it can completely change an npc or a pc because they're just not allowed to have affectionate rp anymore for any reason completely changes the story in, in ways you would never expect what was the one that producer brought up? He brought up something about like trapping someone somewhere. Oh, oh yes, yeah. Uh, this was the way that uh, an evil person comes upon you and goes like, hey, you love this person now. You got to get them to love you, but I'm going to put them in a, in a demi plane. So yeah, so you can't get to them. Have fun dying, bozo. And they die. But we, we came up with something about it that was like, now it's, what was it? There was some hypothetical situation we made where it was like, it was it like if they get it removed in that situation and then the person gets out of the demiplane, then they're like, why wasn't I good enough? <laughs> well, I also had the idea or that something like, like uh, that. Whoever is the person in a situation like this, whoever's the Princess Peach, whoever is the Princess Zelda, uh, their hero just dies and yeah. eventually the villain just goes like, I don't need you anymore. And that's your player character. And so now they have to be like, what happened? That's, that's right. That's what, what it was. It was. Yeah. That's you what it the, was. You were it the was object a of affection. Mm -hmm. A background for your player character. Which I think that it makes this entire thing even sadder if it's not just like, oh, here's some random person that you're now in love with. Like if it's somebody that you know, it, it makes it sadder. If you actually already were, well, no, if you were in love with them, then the curse wouldn't work at all. But like, well, but they may not be in love with you and you may not, because that's so how it works a lot when it's used as a trope in fan fiction is that like both parties do like each other, but there's a stubbornness on one end to admit it. So usually mm. the person who, f who falls ill is like, no, they could never love me. This is the conflict. Like, and so they start coughing up flowers and then it gets to the point where it's so bad in the story. And then the person who was the object of affection was like, you idiot, I've been here the entire time. And it's like touching and heartbreaking and the flowers recede and they're fine. 
or uh the admission comes too late and it's like the last thing that they hear as they're dying is that like no i loved you the entire time <laughs> both of those are lame and tropey get them out that's why it's a fan fiction trope i hate well your fiction. whole thing that you created produce it is also kind of tropey in the fact that yeah. that's pretty much just how tears of the kingdom story goes <laughs> what the game from 2023's already established a whole trope. God, I can't keep up with this stuff. Man. Exactly. You said it after they already did it, so that means you're late. God, the Simpsons. <laughs> but no, that would be a fantastic way, I think, to have like a background for a character. Yeah, and then the DM can do something where somehow you slowly like discover everything they tried to do to get to you but inevitably ended up failing and can wrench your heart out of your chest and just make you feel bad for existing and then yeah. you start coughing up flowers yeah yeah for and now unrelated reason. there's no one <laughs> there's no person to get love back from they're gone dummy what are you gonna do then I guess then it becomes a quest of uh, get some kind of true resurrection or wish to get them back. I feel like that, or or if you want to be like the super painful thing, it's a different strain. So it's not it's not like deadly. It's just chronic. Just so hurts. it's like yeah, it's it's painful. Just hurts. I feel like there's no metaphor whatsoever in that no. at all. Well, all right, that's the flower disease. Now no. Hawaiian cat flu. There's no Hawaii. Here's also the really funny part about the flower diseases where you just get the paladin to spend five lay on hands points and it goes away. But you lose your But then you can't love. love. Okay. Then he I get wouldn't another care. paladin no. to spend five lay on hands points to return that to me. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> what? Can I make it the way it works? So somebody I mean, give Kaifish flower lungs because he will there will be no consequences. <laughs> True. That's already established, yeah. Oh, actually, um, that might make things worse for us. Yeah, <laughs> true. Because then there's not even a chance. Like, even now, there's not hardly a chance, but at least, like, the capability is there. This case would remove the capability. Would it be considered a disease if you lose your ability to love? I or would that so. just be a side effect? I feel like that would just be, like, because some people just lose, like, so, like, you can lose part of your senses from having certain diseases. You know... Uh, some anxiety medication has depression as a side effect, and you can still get drugs for that. Well, yeah, but I would say there are certain things that have side effects that you can't get drugs for the side effects. What? And I think that would this would be one of those cases. Honestly, Levi, I find it a little cliched of you to be pulling from the trope of we can't solve all of our problems with five points of lay on hands. Uh huh. <laughs> That's... Hey, if I would have known this was your attitude towards it earlier, I would have been doing it way more over the entirety of the campaign. <laughs> no, -uh, because I would have forgotten to make anyone sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. exactly. You're you saying did. you're saying that it can work on things more than just like typical sickness. So I would have used it way more. Can we fix my six points of madness? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> but I have an idea for another. Uh, sickness at some point that I don't believe we brought up last time. But is it my turn to talk about the ones I do have made up? Yeah, go ahead. Go for okay. it. Let's go. I had to spit in my spittoon. So I got five, no, six, no, five. Yeah. Five sicknesses that I made and have never used, except maybe once, maybe, I think, because I can't remember to do things. First one, magical malaise. Uh, you can only, basically, it's like having a super migraine that affects your magical ability. Uh, you can only cast one spell per level slot. That's what I think it was. Yeah. I mean, I have it written down here. I'm just trying to find an even way, uh, an even more conciser way to say it. Uh, you can only cast one leveled spell per slot of the level so like you only get one second level spell one third level spell even if you're a 20th level wizard you only get one per spell level um it is described as being caused as overexerting one's magical abilities um it can also this disease can be replicated with magic and alchemy uh so biological warfare um and it can also 
be caused by just facing severe condi conditions that test your immune system. It can be cured by lay on hands or lesser restoration, or you can perform a check that will reveal that a hot bath and a non-alcoholic drink will fix this malady. Otherwise, it persists for a week. As, that's going to continue for a while. Uh, you guys like being sick? You guys like being magically sick? No. Not at all. But it's like, it's a magical sickness. That's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. It's not something I mean, you, you don't get that in real life. I would say it's cooler than regular sickness. <laughs> yeah. But it's still not that great. Yeah, that's what makes it cooler, right? Um... When I talked about this disease last time we recorded it, it was cooler because it came off the heel of Levi being like, you're limited to the sicknesses that we experience in real life. So it made me sound cooler and wiser, but mm. now it just makes me sound like I'm trying too hard. <laughs> I sound like that. <laughs> um, the next one I got is called fervent fever. Uh, it's like the flu. Um, the flu. It, you have to make a saving throw every single turn. Um, and if you fail it, then you can only take one thing per round, i.e. action, bonus action, reaction, movement. That's all. You can do one of those per round. Uh, oh, wait. No, sorry. That's no matter what. Um, ah. you become stunned if you fail it. Um, and you also suffer from disadvantage on all rolls outside of combat, too. Holy moly. Yeah, that's the fun one. This most usually comes from having somebody else who has the disease being around you. If it ever does come up out of nowhere, it's from being in an unclean environment for an extended amount of time. Um, and I put Was that the one you were saying you were going to spring on us because we didn't bathe often enough? Yes. Yes, it was. Because I put a little passive-aggressive note in this one that says, Naturally, this could be avoided if someone merely cleaned themselves or took proper precautions, but some prefer haste to carefulness. <laughs> I should have changed that with cleanliness, but anyway. Uh, it can be cured by lay on hands, less restoration, or a check that reveals that the best immediate cure for this disease is taking 10 points of fire damage. Because it burns off the sick. Um, a slower cure is a well-known pharmaceutical that involves ground cattail, leg of frog, and some oregano. Otherwise, it persists for 10 days. And can we can we recreate the bit about the cattail from the last episode? Oh yeah, where do you mean the plant or the the body part of no, the animal? No, I, I mean the animal. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't Cause mean it's, that. I, I got yeah. it. Because you said the other he, thing last time. Because he means the other the, thing last time. Because he mean yeah, he said the other. He said the cat to the plant. That's the true one. That's the that's real the, one. That's the real. Although one. that's gotta that's gotta be a bitch and a half to mix. Because, like, when you break the outside of one of those things, they just go... Is it unbroken kind of cattail or broken cattail? Grounded cattail. Grounded cattail. Okay, yeah, then so it would trying be fine. To, well, I know, but trying to grind it, you would hit it with a thing, and then it would start expanding. That's what I'm point. saying is just do that beforehand. Have it be already expanded, it's and then grind it up. It's pharmaceutical. It's, it's a little hard to make, but as long as you got the botany knowledge, you'll you'll know what to do. Yeah. Maybe you can cast like time stop. <laughs> cast a ninth level spell to break to it grind down. cattail so that it doesn't expand. Listen, the pharmaceutical industry is very lucrative. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, then we get into some of my cooler ones. Um, Eris's blessing again, Greek D and D, Greek world. Uh it is more akin to a curse than a sickness, but it nevertheless occurs like a disease, has no physical symptoms, shows up out of nowhere, and is only noticeable by a streak of terrible luck. Uh, a character, uh, the actual effects, is a character that suffers from this disease will suffer a critical failure on a roll of one or two, and nat 20s are not considered critical. Uh, Ew. Yeah, it's, I like this one. Rip. Uh, many people believe it has to do with irreverence to the gods. Some think it might strike those who have just been too lucky. Uh, no one really knows what it is. Again, I like playing on the idea of just no science or poor science. Um, if a character speaks ill of a deity, I have to roll a percentile die. And if the number rolled is equal to or more than four times the character's level, uh, this this curse, this blessing as it's called, will manifest. Otherwise, if a character rolls a nap 20 three times or more in one session, they will get this disease. 
But in order to resist it, they have to make a charisma saving throw. So there is a chance, at least. Even if you do fulfill all the criteria, you can still resist it. Um, now, the only way to cure it, though, is not by typical means. Uh, you'll have to cast a third level or higher... A uh, cleric has to cast a third level or higher spell on the afflicted creature. Any spell, though, including blight. Uh, otherwise, the religion check will reveal that a display of exceptional bad luck can cure this disease. Exceptional. Yeah, it can be anything, so long as it is deemed as really unfortunate uh, for the person that's suffering. It'll probably appease the disease, is what I put in there. Ease the disease. I like that. It rhymes. Doesn't it? Wait, it does? Appease the disease. Bow. Day bow bow. Bow bow. Ow. He's just playing Doom. <laughs> My next one is my sciencey one. Somatose adynamia. A disease that comes from the old tongue, literally meaning of weak body. Somatose adynamia can be an invisible killer, only known by how it affects the blood of the victim. Uh, if somebody's blood begins to float in the air, that is how you know they have somatose adynamia. The bends. Oh, yeah, this one, this one, yeah, this one's the nasty, gross one. When I was describing that in this little text blurb, I realized it's hard to tell what somebody's blood is doing in their body. But I know now what I meant by that is what you should do to test if you have it. If you're not quite sure, is like cut yourself a little bit and watch your blood just go bloop, 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 bloop. Gotcha. In the air. Um, anyway, uh, someone with this disease may notice that they get hit harder than they used to or that they aren't as hardy as they used to be. Uh, any creature that has this disease will take an additional 5 damage from every attack that they get struck by, which is of the same damage type as the initial attack. Uh, this can be caused by poor diet, but it, is, it may also be caused by a very magical interaction. If a creature is not already aquatic, has the spell Water Breathing cast on them more than 5 times in one week, they will contract this disease. Uh, this will also happen if Fly or Levitate is cast on them in the same way. Because your blood ain't meant to be doing that for that long. Uh, yeah, this one also can't be cured by paladin stuff or uh, like lesser restoration and all that. The main way to realize it... Oh, that's right. It has the jellyfish thing. Uh, the main way to cure this is with a check that reveals that the correction of the blood may come from the manipulation of other humors, more specifically urine. If a healthy person urinates on a victim, they tend to be cured by the end of the day. Otherwise, it'll persist for a week. So it's the bends, but jellyfish. Yes, bendy fish. <laughs> and on my last one that I'm very proud of as well, uh, no hurdy, still killy. The odd affliction that was first noticed by orcs is characterized by the inability to feel pain. This lack of pain does not make the sufferer any less killable, however. Um, someone that suffers from NHSK will not know how much damage they take from any source. Instead, the DM will calculate the damage they take and compare it to their HP. The player will only be informed when they go into death saving throws. We've had this one. Yep. That's the fun one. I love this one. Uh, this disease, NHSK, has not been particularly studied or researched because many orcs just treat it as like a cold that pops up and you just kind of just go on without it. Uh, in truth, when a creature suffers more than 30 bludgeoning or force damage in a single blow, not a single turn, but a single blow, they must make a int saving throw or else the pain perception within their brains becomes muddled. Which you could equate that as being some stem just gets snapped off <laughs> a little bit. Um, NHSK can be cured by a palin's lay on hands or by lesser restoration. Otherwise, a medicine check will reveal that a good hard kick in the head can fix the problem. Which I put in parentheses, a purposeful bludgeoning or force attack against the victim. Um, if a cure is not pursued, the brain's pain perception will be repaired in seven days, minus the character's int modifier. Which technically means it'll heal quicker if you're stupider. <laughs> Dang. No, wait, it'll take longer. Sorry, I'm dumb. I forgot, okay. how, I, I forgot how numbers work for a minute there. I was thinking seven minus a negative number. That's shorter. Uh, it is not shorter. Not shorter. Okay, now we've, now we've recapped all the stuff I talked before. So I need you guys now to act like this wasn't the first time you heard it. And you need to, you need to talk about it. What yeah. we said last time. Um, I know that. Well, you're right. The last one has happened to somebody in our party, though it was more of a curse thing because darkness towards the end of her life lost the ability to feel pain as a boon from Dionysus, I think. Um, 
And then the first one, I think, also happened to TJ. <laughs> the magical malaise. Did it? I thought he experienced the uh, the no pain thing twice because he got one from actually just being damaged by a bunch of bludgeoning damage. Um, oh, which was maybe that's from what I'm thinking of. He got something from Megamine, but I couldn't remember if it was the magical malaise. Some, I feel like somebody had magical malaise at some point. Maybe. I don't remember. I do not remember that happening, but it's entirely possible. It is it's entirely possible. It has been concocted. Honestly, I should I should use that a lot more. I love the idea of biological warfare. <laughs> Quoted? In D and D, in D and D, in <laughs> Minecraft. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that part out. I think. <laughs> nope, I'm leaving it in. Yay for me. Not good for him. We need to slander him, Jordan. Uh uh Oh, I thought you meant taking out the part about the liking biological warfare. That's staying in. Yeah. No, I meant taking out the part about it being in Minecraft. <laughs> you wouldn't take that out, though. I mean, make him guilty. You wouldn't do that to me. I'm just a little guy. That likes He's just a warfare. little guy. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> enough about me yapping, though. Now make Levi make more diseases, Jordan. Uh. Hawaiian cat flu. I'm not. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you're getting the first disease in Vivia 3 because no of okay wait i've got to look up more diseases what well, okay what about organ syndrome no that's just the hemorrhaging thing um oh, I was actually... this one's not just a cut they just blow up i was actually wondering the last time we recorded this episode uh if it would be possible to do something like the cordyceps from the last of us in D. &D. oh holy moly um I mean, I'm not entirely sure how Cordyceps works because I've never played The Last of Us nor watched it, but I do know that it's zombies but fungus. In the in the game, it was spread through spores. In the uh, like TV show, it was more traditional zombies where it was like if you were attacked, scratched, bitten, that kind of stuff, that's how it transferred because mm -hmm. they didn't want to put people in gas masks for the entire show. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, it would certainly be feasible there i mean already there's things like uh rules on how someone becomes undead if they get killed in a certain way um so i think it would just be transferable to because like for instance for instance we've encountered this very recently um if you get killed by finger of death mm -hmm. you don't get death saves you just die and you become a zombie immediately um if you get killed by a vampire if a vampire drinks all of your blood you don't get death saves you just die and become a vampire spawn i believe um that might only be if you're buried though or maybe if it's you're not buried i don't remember it's one of the two well there's stuff like that that already exists within D, D. so i think it would be very simple to just rearrange rules like if you're gonna base it off the tv show's interpretation which is honestly the less fun one because it's the less original. Um, well, I mean, the TV show's interpretation, though, is based off of real world science because okay. there is a fungus that takes over. I think it's ants. Yes. That, like it implants itself in the ant's head and then pilots, which I think is more terrifying than like the fictional concept of zombies is like deadly mushrooms that are parasites is just terrifying. Yeah, I could easily see. I could see a way, though, you would have to finagle it so that it's not quite if you get outright killed by it, because mm -hmm. that would be the, the best way to make it more dangerous is if it's something that can actively attack you and possibly change how you are operating um, without you being dead. So, like, a series of checks every, mm -hmm. every long rest or something uh, to see if the disease progresses. And as it progresses, you start losing certain abilities that you can do in combat. So, like, perhaps you... Uh, what I'm thinking of is, like, obviously it would be taking over your um, nervous system. So you would lose things like your ability to have reactions because your reaction time is all messed up because you're all over the place. Um, and then eventually, obviously, like, bonus actions go out the window as well. Uh, your movement speed gets all wonky. You could incorporate things from spells like, I forget, is it just confusion? Where you roll a d4 at the beginning of every turn and that determines the direction you move in because yeah. your 
your brain's all messed with right now. So you're not quite in full control. So you know you want to move, but you can't quite maybe move in the right direction. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Stuff like that until finally, obviously, you the DC would get higher and harder each time you fail because the mm -hmm. disease is progressing. So eventually you would just get to a point where you fail so many checks that you just outright pretty much die. And your body is now a fungus creature that is not you. I feel like that fits within the parameters of The Last of Us. Because I know that the in at least in the game, the runners are still cognizant of like what they're doing. Like their their bodies and minds have not fully died yet, but the fungus is fully taken over. So there's like an audio um there's audio in the background tracks that is like the runners crying because they know they know what they're doing but they can't stop they it they can't control it which is terrifying that is terrifying then perhaps even that would be particularly cruel though i think oh, making yeah. them be like you're still this person <laughs> <laughs> you just have you're still this pc you just have absolutely no control over what you're doing i the dm control everything you that do and you're so hostile sad. to everyone all the time that would be awful and i would probably never implement that so into much a angst. game just because one you're kind of blocking a player out of, of making a new pc because mm -hmm. typically the rule is obviously you're only going to play one at a time with exceptions um but at the same time in that situation you would make it so that the other players would probably end up killing that player, but it wouldn't be so simple as just being like, oh, well, it's not them anymore. They're dead zombie now. They've got this other player character that we know they're going to be playing. No, that's still them at the table right now. If you go by that ruling where like, I feel like that would just heighten the stakes and make people be more willing to try to be like, we got to find some way to fix them. But then that makes it worse because now they're actively hostile to you. And if you leave the area, they're probably just going to also leave. So then, like, how do you find them? Um, it's Hear a whole out. bag of issues. Go ahead. I feel like it might be an interesting way to phase out a PC that somebody doesn't want to play anymore. True. It could be. <laughs> it <it's laughs> certainly... But then that's heavily implying that, like... Because they're a player character. Player characters mm -hmm. are pretty strong. They're probably going to start some kind of like outbreak if you don't go deal with them. That's a problem for later levels. Is it? <laughs> Maybe. I think that's a good way to introduce a problem that needs solving uh, into the story. Um, Two birds, one stone. True. True. Okay. I could, I could, I, I could run with that. I could run with that. I disagree with everything that's been said the last 10 minutes. Yeah? Yeah. Are you going to explain why or just, just say that? Just be contrary. I guess I will. Since okay. <laughs> to. Uh, again, it depends on your world setting, but I feel like uh, as a result of the ease of access to healing, just you fix it and it's done. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, cordyceps. But you what if you don't realize it until it's too late to fix is that such a thing? Well, I mean, like, at a certain point, I feel like if it's spread far I mean, enough, your brain would be Swiss cheese. So that might be the thing that's keeping you alive. You're still you and you're still alive with this thing taking over. But if you take out the thing, then you die. I raise you magic. True. Have you I would... seen someone's body get dis disemboweled and then they took a long rest and they felt fine? I, yes, this is I correct. would say, just as with other diseases or magical effects it would just be once you've reached the point of no return where the player character has no control over their body anymore that would be considered death and not necessarily you have a disease um in which case probably wish could fix them um i would be hesitant to apply true it would be one of those things where it's like this kills them and they can only be revived via wish um because i would be hesitant to apply resurrection to be able to fix yeah it might a just bring back creature. whatever yeah um but then at the same time yeah no i mean if you catch it beforehand but at the same time you can 
say a number of things like like what I said earlier, where it's like it can only be fixed by a certain level of magic or we could run with the because it's not necessarily a disease and more of a parasite. It works differently. Um, but then also, again, then it's not really a disease. It's a parasite. So then we leave the realm of diseases and get into things like mind flayers, which do a similar thing. Intellect devourers. Uh, intellect devourers, which Dang, do a similar thing. We can't thing. talk about tapeworms in this episode. Plague Inc. has parasites. True. Okay, so, okay, then I get because of the authority of Plague Inc., we can consider that a disease then. All right. It's such a good game. I have not played that since pre-2020. They <laughs> fell off with the pandemic update. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what, the, the pandemic update in the game or the one in real life? No, the one in the game where they made a version where you cure the disease. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very fun. Lame. You're well, playing a, ink, not that's a cure board ink. Game. That's a board <laughs> game is pandemic where you're supposed to like cure the disease. Exactly. They're it's just copying. Game. Yeah. Um. Also, I'm going to be honest though, The Last of Us Cordyceps thing is not nearly appealing to me in a world that's already got undead because it's like, it's just another flavor. It's of just undead another now. flavor yeah. of undead, yeah. And mind flayers too, and vampires. There's just a bunch of things that just aren't people that look like people. Yeah. Changelings. It's, it's, it's all kind of the same solution, right? You either fix them before it happens by some sort of magical healing or kill them afterwards. In which case, you also get the added benefit though that after you kill them, you can also cast a spell that then fixes them back the way they were. I remember reading about that in Curse of Strahd recently, spoilers, where you can encounter the character Doru, and you can just kill him, and then raise him back to dead, yeah. raise dead, and then he goes like, oh my gosh, thank you for killing me and bringing me back. Now I'm not a vampire. Let me <laughs> tell you what happened and how I became a vampire. Yep. But, also, if it's raised dead, I mean, the players aren't going to probably have that by the time they encounter him, and that's something to consider, too, is when are you throwing something like this at your player's Level. Um, because raise dead is a fifth level spell. So the early, the person who will have the earliest access to that would be a cleric, I believe, because I don't think sorcerers or wizards get access druids to that. May. I don't know if they do. Or druids not. might. I think it might be special kinds of druids because I know it's firmly a cleric spell. So if you don't have a cleric, which if you're running Curse of Strahd is probably rare, um, because it's a very like. It's heavily implied if you play a holy character, you'll probably do better in evil dark vampire land. Um, but still, that could make that a, a completely unreliable way of, of doing it. Which also, I think that's a holdover from original Curse of Straw, because I'm pretty sure in 5e they did change that to where if you resurrect something that was undead, it does not fix them per se i don't remember i think it's a special thing with vampires i'm not quite sure um because i looked it up because i wanted to be sure of it but it was a while ago now i raise you audience at home to instead make curse of strahd cordycep of strahd and just rewrite the whole adventure to instead be about vampires to instead be about the last of us there you go make him the hive mind he's connected to every vampire literally there is like a small little tendril that connects him to every vampire. In 5e, um, resurrection spells do not cure any sort of uh, ism that is on someone when they die. So they would still just be a vampire, according to 5e. Mm. You'd just be reviving them. Then what do you think they're yapping about in that specific section of Curse of Strahd where it says, if the players revive him? Again, I would think that's a holdover from original Curse of Straw because it wasn't originally a 5e. Um, it's probably just special circumstances within Barovia. I was say, that I too. didn't pass the, the editor's check. They were just like, eh, yep. copy-paste from 4e. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, so you may leave, I make one thing. That took like 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, can we get Hawaiian we talked cat about Hana Hockey. Hmm? Can we get the Hawaiian cat flu now? 
I don't want to make Hawaiian cat flu. You can make Hawaiian cat flu. No, I, Jordan can make Hawaiian cat flu. I did my quota of my five show and tell diseases. Jordan, why don't, since you STIs. want it so bad, why don't you make Hawaiian cat flu? Sure. Can you make it into an STI? Because I didn't bring one of those. Uh, I, we could. Um, so it's an unusual disease. According to the Garfield wiki, um, it's an unusual disease that causes uh, the subject to dance the hula whenever somebody mentions Hawaii or anything Hawaiian. Um, also, like, a voracious appetite and the urge to wear Hawaiian shirts. So I'm going to say that this would be an STI um, transmitted through tabaxis. Like, exclusively. And just how venereal is it? Um, yep. I'm going to say it's like a normal venereal disease where it's like, it's, it's, it's fluids. Do they have contraceptives that help in your world? Um, I would say wear a condom. Do they have those? Yes. See, I prefer, I like the idea of the, whoa, magic hot dog comic. <laughs> On the, whoa, magic hot dog So this time you comic. are talking about the hot dog magic comic. Yes. Um, I feel like that is also a appropriate um, safe sex procedures, but you would have to have a pretty high-level mage in order to uh, make that a thing. Well, we'll have to talk about it next week for Valentine's Day, where we're going to discuss venereal diseases, STIs, and how to incorporate them in your D&D &D game. Buddy, no. Follow I for more! Oh, you we're, wrote we're that, recording you... our yearly conversation we have about that? You wrote that on the schedule and I changed it. We're not doing the STI episode. Ever since a few weeks ago, I've had more than a yearly talk, but it's mostly with my doctor. Oh. We can bring the doctor on the podcast if you want. They said they don't want to be mentioned by name. Understand, oh, okay. guys, we're not doing an STI episode. That's what she thinks. It's two to one. I'm the editor. Can't record anything if we don't consent. <laughs> Which, funny enough, comes up in the STI in the conversation. STI conversation. <laughs> hey, we hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to. If you really like our content, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on YouTube, and look for us on Spotify. If you'd like to see us continuing to do more fun projects in the future, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find our page linked in the description above all of our other social media links. And finally, if you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and check out some more skit-based content and things like that, check us out on Twitter and TikTok. Links in the description. And hey, thanks. <laughs>